Right, finding music. If you're in the creative industries, you will know that this can be a serious problem. Let's say you're an independent movie maker, you're on very tight budgets, you're on very short deadlines, you have very, very little choice. You have bargain basement music on one side, which is freely available, or it's very cheap, and it's very often very poor quality. So you have bargain basement on one side, you have um, gatekeepers on the other. Now, anybody who has ever dealt with gatekeepers will know that this is a very lengthy very expensive process, it's out of reach for most creatives. And even uh, when you do have it available, you'd prefer not to, not to go through it. Now, um, with the digital music libraries state at the moment, between 80 and 90% of large digital music libraries are not being licensed because the, the music simply cannot be found. Metadata is erratic, the current systems are simply not adequate. And it doesn't help that when you do send a search query, it returns something that looks a bit like this. You may have a feel for what this is, you may have an idea, but you really don't have any real concept of it, and you certainly would never buy a bicycle based on this. You would never license a piece of music based on some random clip that's returned in your search. So most search systems are generated around concepts. So let's say you send this as a search query, it will ask you, do you mean an insect, do you mean a fly, or if it's really clever, we'll say, do you mean animal vision? Trouble is, you just can't describe music. If I ask you to describe a piece of Philip Glass music, every person in this room will describe it in different ways. So the trouble is that when it comes to music, do I want to actually do I want to search by thinking, or do I want to search by listening? Well, I know which one I'd rather do. So we approach the problem in very different ways. We actually look at music itself. We look at the feel and the texture of music, we dive into music at a granular level. So what we do, we take the long tail of um, up-and-coming artists, of back catalogues, we divide it into meaningful segments, we generate automatic algorithms, very efficient ones, which look at music phrases um, and divide music up so that we can actually dive into it. What we then do is generate music descriptors which look at the texture and the feel and the mood and the style of music. So basically, with your original query, if your original query was metaphorically this, then you would get results that look a bit like this. So you are actually getting the feel and the texture of it. And if you are working on a piece, on a creative piece, you will be able to get a variety of alternatives in very little time. And of course, while we do that, we never forget that music is a cultural construct. And then if I show you this image, everybody in this room will probably have a John Williams soundtrack in their heads, and that's entirely down to your cultural conditioning. We also don't forget that music evolves in real time. So, I mean, anybody who has ever, had, um, who has ever heard um, Steeler's Wheel stuck in the middle before it was used in the famous ear-cutting scene from Reservoir Dogs will know that the meaning of that piece of music has completely changed as a result of it being used in that movie, and that you could certainly never use it for a baby food advert now. So, the last, at last but not least, of course, music is a phenomenal cultural connector. And this is a piece that we created earlier. Uh, it's a system that we uh, designed where we used field recordings from all over the world. Um, these recordings had no artist name, no name of track. We position them on the map and we can use any point in the map as a starting point of a query and it draws a web of lines, a web of connections which represent um, relationships between music from different cultures. And of course this was done in order to prove that we can eliminate the world music classification or the world music genre. There is no such thing as world music, or rather all music is world music and all of it should be accessible. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to do something very dangerous, which is a live demo. And we're going to rely on our system here at Ravensbourne to connect to our service in, to databases in Barcelona and remote service. So let's say that I'm, uh, I'm working on a piece which requires a bit of Aretha, and I can't afford Aretha, so I'm just going to put in Aretha. And I'm going to hope that Barcelona talks to me now and that I don't get dropped. So what we're doing is searching for Aretha for in over three million entries of all sorts of different tracks. It's brought in some clips. This is, these are the usual random clips you get from uh, big databases. So I can listen to a bit of Aretha, pick one of those. Hopefully it will stream nicely. What I can do now is I can send that, and this is where the adventure starts. 
We're now analyzing music in real time. Now, this clip of audio you just heard is being analyzed on the fly, and this was something that was a non-trivial problem, and up until now, it took days to actually get results. Well, this has actually already done its job. It's dived into a small library of tracks that's available to us, and it's actually found other clips which are on those lines which are pre-cleared and available to us to license. So things like this. <laughs> Famous tracks, I Will Survive, things like that. And This is a completely unknown artist. I actually presented this artist to the library owner and I said, have you ever heard of this girl? She sounds remarkably like Aretha. In fact, if we actually do look at other bits of that song, it's all on those lines. Well, the library owner never heard of her, of course. And so these are, this is a classic example of where um, unknown artists can be discovered in a matter of seconds. This is someone who's available for licensing. We can actually license it now, we can use it for a movie, and we have our problem solved. This has taken a few seconds. This is, we can now carry on with this, we can actually browse, we can, um, uh, we can do whatever we want. It's, it's a very, very dynamic system. It's very fast. If I'm a creative, this is incredibly useful to me. Uh, this system has actually sold um, new concept that's been created by Peter Gabriel, so our commercial version is being funded by Peter Gabriel. And um, through showing this demo, got deals with both Sony's, um, EMI has now been divided between Sony and Universal, so them as well, and Warner's, a bunch of independents. All of them have actually signed up because they saw how efficient this can be and how much it can open um, their music libraries. The Technology Strategy Board used this as a case study to present to the government to show how new technology can change the business model. Thank you. No, that's fine.